everybody this is pretty from it's a pretty world welcome to my channel today i'm using this stamp set another stamp set this background stamp from rubbernecker called daisy background and i'm showing you five different ways to color this uh, background stamp so i'm starting off by all so you can see here i've already mounted this background stamp onto my misty and i've removed this foam from the misty because this is a rubber stamp you don't really need that foam when you're stamping uh, on your cardstock and I'm starting off with this uh, watercolor paper this is a hot press watercolor paper it's a smoother watercolor paper so it doesn't have a texture on it usually I like this paper when I'm embossing especially if I'm embossing a fine detailed uh, stamp and in this case this is quite a fine detailed image so I'm preparing the surface with my embossing buddy and I'm going to emboss and I'm going to ink this up with my VersaFine uh, VersaMark ink. And I'm going to emboss this image using white embossing ink. Now I'm going to uh, go faster wherever these things are repeated or things that we all are very, uh, so things that we know how to emboss and stuff like that. Those are places where I'm going to go a little faster. And where I want to show you something specifically like coloring and stuff like that, I will slow down the video like here. So now I've just taken this uh, embossed panel and I'm going to tear this panel onto a wood block using some wash washi tape. And the reason for this is so that I don't have to touch my paper to move it. I just need to move the block uh, in order to move the paper. I don't know if it makes sense. Um, so I'm using the color fuse inks for doing some water coloring. So I have started by misting this panel really well with my water spritzer and I'm laying this darkest color of pink into onto my glass mat and I'm picking it up with my brush. And because there's already water on my surface, I'm just going to drop this color into that and I'm just letting the water do its thing. It's just I'm not being very specific about it being in certain places just making sure that they are over the embossed flowers that's it so I'm just going to go repeating this over and over again until that first layer of color is laid onto this paper and once I was once I'm done laying the first color a layer of color I'm going to take a like a paper towel and dab off all that extra water and now what it does it it just gives me that first wash of pink color. Now I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to take this green color, put it on my glass mat and spritz the paper once again with water. And again, drop this green color onto the empty spaces between those uh, leaves. And this time you can see I'm not being careful as to the, the green not overlapping with the pink. Actually, I'm letting the green overlap with the pink and just do its work because the intention of this painting is loose painting. You're not trying to be very, very specific or anything like that. You want to make it as loose as possible and that adds to the um, to the overall effect of the of this of this uh, panel and then I'm taking some yellow and I'm adding that just to the center of the flowers and I'm gonna after I'm done with yellow I'm gonna go back with the pink and deepen a few flowers and I'm going to repeat that over and over again until I am happy with the way it looks so just keep in mind you don't have to be very rigid about where you're laying the color just just letting the colors do its its job um, you can see I'm going to go back with that pink and I'm just going to repeat that and and I finished off this panel of course off camera I, I didn't want to because it's the same thing over and over again and if I had to keep it this video would be really really long so I just wanted you to get the basic idea of how it goes and here you can see the finished look of that panel and you can see the the greens and the pink the pink peeking through the greens it gives that effect that there are more flowers in the background and the leaves are um and, and the leaves as well so it gives you it makes you look like a wildflower meadow <laughs> so that's the first panel for the second panel uh, I'm starting off with this black cardstock it's a simple black cardstock and I'm going to emboss this black cardstock using gold embossing powder. And 
I'm, I'm putting the tape to hold my cardstock there because the cardstock was the same size of the background stamp so there was no really there was not much place for me to put my magnet to hold it so the tape holds my black cardstock there so I'm just um, embossing this I'm inking it up with Versafine a Versamark ink and I'm going to emboss that with gold embossing powder I love the look of any metallic embossing powders on dark card stocks so if you were to make this card and you did not want to color it you can just actually color uh, emboss it and just leave it this way but because we are talking about colors we're going to move on so I'm going to start coloring this using some Prisma colors um, color pencils and I've chosen some aquas and pink shades now make sure that your pencil is really nice and sharp and that helps you to get into those nooks and crannies and keep a sharpener handy because you will be sharpening those pencils multiple times so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by adding this darkest color which in my case here is parrot green uh, to the center of the flower and even to the places where there would be shadows when I say shadows it is um, flowers that are overlapping other flowers will have some cast shadows petals overlapping other petals will also create cast shadows so I'm laying this dark color where I think there would be cast shadows and once I'm done laying the darkest color I'm going to go with my second color which is the light aqua and I'm going to blend that not only uh, I mean, I'm not going to I'm going to use that color from the darkest and blend it a little further into the petal uh, so I'm going over the dark color once and then a little further into the petal and make sure you're not pressing these pencils too hard on the paper because these are wax based pencils if you lay it too hard at the very beginning you will add wax and you won't be able to blend the pencils after that as well and then you t I'm taking this lightest green and I'm going all over that petal once again from the darkest shade to the lightest shade and of course yes it will lighten up the entire petal uh, a bit but that's all right because I'm going to go back with this darkest color and I'm going to start laying the dark shade once more and that'll just make this flower pop and as I said because I did not go heavy-handed this time it was a I was able to blend in with the darker color and I'm using this brush to buff off I mean take um, brush off any extra shards from the pencil pencil residue and I'm doing the same thing with the pink pink color as well so I'm starting off with magenta which is the darkest of the colors um, again in the center of the of the flower and I'm going to blend that using rose uh, rose uh, color pencil and then I'm going to blend that using deco pink which is the lightest color um, in this trio of colors that I'm using there you go um, this is going to go all over that petal and then I'm going to go back with the darkest magenta in the center of the flower and that's pretty much how I built all these flowers and I colored the entire panel uh, with these two colors um, uh, these two colors covering up covering up the background <laughs> I've lost for words um, and once I was done with the flower what I did is I took this white Posca pen this is a paint pen if you don't have a paint pen even a white gel pen will do it uh, I like the look of the paint pen once in a while and I'm going to add some dots to the center of the flower but when I'm adding these dots I'm making sure to extend them from the center a little bit outwards so you will see it uh, when I take my hands off of course that the, the the dots are a little farther away like they're extended from the center and that gives an illusion when you as if you're looking at the flowers from the top uh, and they all so they're all looking up towards you and you will see the finished panel soon there you go um, how those flowers look so they all look like they're looking towards you like you are looking at them from the top are uh, you looking at a meadow maybe from uh, from the sky from the plain or whatever I don't know from a hilltop so that's the illusion moving on to the next coloring method that was the finished panel I'm taking a Copic friendly white note card and I am oh actually not sorry this is a Bristol white smooth uh, 
uh, card panel and I'm going to stamp that panel with uh, black Versafine Versamark ink because I want to go I'm going to use zig color markers. Zig color markers really well work well on Bristol smooth paper. They do work well with certain watercolor papers. I've, I've found that not many of them but Bristol really works beautifully. Anyways so I'm starting off with this red marker and I'm doing the same thing laying it at the center of the flower blending it with the next color in case in this is orange and then blending that with yellow now I did not lay the red like the other way where I said I laid it where the car shadows were in this case I did not do that and I'll tell you why in a bit so I blended that out with the with the yellow uh, with the lightest shade which in my case is yellow and I did that again I repeated the same thing over and over again which I'll be doing eventually for all my flowers so just lay the red and then the orange blend that with the uh, with the yellow I'm using this craft paper here to remove that excess orange color from my yellow pen and then I just took a green uh, uh, pen for the stems and then I blended that using a colorless uh, blender for this uh, for this zig color markers now this is the reason why I did not add the shadows earlier I took a dark brown shade and I started laying shadows or cast shadows wherever I think the flowers would overlap or the petals would overlap on each other um, this way it was easier so this way the the shadows looked more prominent it was not blended as well if I had done it at the very beginning the red would not have shown it so well so I'm adding this later on and then I'm just going to add the shadow as I told you over the wherever I think there would be a cast shadow and I'm going to blend this brown using that same colorless uh, pen which I used earlier and then I'm using the same brown to uh, color the center of the flower so I'm just adding a little bit of brown and then blending it again with the uh, colorless blender so that's pretty much it how I've colored the entire panel of flowers and then I took three shades of blue and I created an ombre effect in the background so I added the darkest in the middle uh, in the bottom the mid-tone in the center and the lightest on the top and there you go and here is the finished look of that panel when I was old and this looked so bright and vibrant it's just it's just beautiful it looks so summery to me and that pretty much finished that fourth way of coloring this is is this the fourth way of coloring maybe this is actually the fourth way of coloring that was the third one so for the fourth one sorry uh, I'm gonna start off by stamping it using this gray uh, ink from um, color fuse called chill chill that's a cool name um, and I'm going to do some lone, no line coloring using my Copic markers and I'm keeping the Copic markers fairly simple using just two shades of gray C3 and C1 for the petals so I'm adding the car shadows which I've been talking about even in the past uh, past uh, panels that we created cast shadows in the center where the where the center of the flowers would be and wherever the flower petals overlaps the other but I'm also adding a few lines on the petals to give them those creases the artist has already drawn a few lines I'm adding a few extra lines just to add few details just because these flowers are basically going to be white and you want to show some details if there's no details you, you the flower itself will be lost because it's white sorry about the shadow I was filming this early in the morning and the Sun was just rising and it was hitting through the window and the shadow kept casting and no matter what I did my table faces in such a way that I couldn't help it so there was the shadow constantly on the place where I was uh, where I was coloring so I'm really really sorry about it I'm hoping that after a while I do switch off a couple of lights that it might get better uh, but until then please bear with me so now I'm just blending those gray lines with my lighter color which is C1 in this case you want to go over and over again until you see that C3 is kind of vanishing so there's not much harsh lines um, between the c3 and the c1 and then once i was done with that i repeated the same thing same 
method over and over again with other flowers as well so i'm doing another flower here so here you go i i actually turned on the uh, turned off the light but looks like that didn't do much either <laughs> so i'm so sorry about that i'm hoping that you're able to see and you're able to understand but if you aren't able to do uh, if you're not understanding shoot me um a question or so on my comment below and i should be able to answer your clear your doubts about this sorry about that anyway so i'm doing the same thing as i talked about for the first flower and i repeated the same process for all the flowers in this background now for the stamen in this case i did took c9 c7 and c5 and i'm laying some dots with c9 again i'm going past the center of the flower i want the center of the flower to look really big you know like almost like the anemone though these are not anemones these are daisies but i wanted that look so i created that center a little more wider than what the artist had intended to make it now that is the advantage when you're doing no line coloring you can actually um, modify your images to your liking or to suit your uh, your style of coloring or that particular uh, particular occasion or what you're doing in my case i'm creating these daisies to look like an anemone which you will see eventually and then i'm what i did is i took this y11 a very light yellow color and i just added a little bit of color in the center where the stamen is towards uh, towards the center of the flower just to give a little color into the otherwise very white flower and i'm repeating that again with the second flower to um same this the statement that i was talking about just adding those dots uh going a little further from the actual center of the flower i keep repeating those words again and again center 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 anyways you understand what i'm trying to say yeah i hope so and then with the yellow color in the middle and then i took two different shades of green yg67 and then i blended yg67 with yg03 Honestly, there's not really much of a stem in these flowers, but because there's no line, you can thicken up those stems a bit. So, and I'm going to finish this whole panel. There you go. There's a finished panel. And you can see how those flowers look nice and bloomed because of those large centers. Now for the final way of coloring is paper piecing. And I love paper piecing. Even as a little girl, I used to paper piece a lot of dolls in my drawing bed drawing books i i just 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 love it it's so therapeutic to cut all those papers and put them together and to puzzle them i love puzzles so this was just beautiful so here you go my my ranting over i just stamped that uh background twice on this uh designer paper that i selected which has a little bit of a watercolor effect and with versafine black ink and i'm going to start fussy cutting these flowers now when you're fussy cutting these flowers make sure you're cutting them very close to the line one and you're cutting them in batches do not try cutting them all together cut them in batches so you'll see here i will cut this fussy cut this first batch of cluster of flowers right there and then i'm going to adhere it immediately so that i don't miss the places of these uh, of these flowers i'm just going to adhere it directly with some glue and i'm going to finish this panel there you go just like that and that's pretty much it that's the fifth way of coloring this cardstock now let's start making cards so my first card here i'm going to use this uh, paper piece uh, cardstock uh, panel that we just did right now and i'm using this stamp this is called the thinking of you stamp it has a frame a wonky frame around it and i'm gonna before i used my misty my misty was dirty and i was lazy to clean it so i just covered it with some copy copy paper so it protects my white pristine note card top folding note card that i'm going to use um and i'm going to place that stamp that we just took out the thinking of you stamp uh and i'm going to stamp that using versa mark black ink uh, now when i stamped it even though i cleaned the center it still uh, stained the center of the cardstock which is okay because i was going to cover it with my uh, paper pieced panel now i'm going to measure the inside of this frame which was three and a quarter by four and a half so i just die cut not die cut actually i i cut that using my paper trimmer uh, to that measurement that we measured and i'm going to adhere this inside that wonky uh, frame 
actually i think this car was my favorite of all the cars it has such a modern look to it when i initially started it i wasn't sure about the colors but when it was all done i really really fell in love with it anyway so i'm just adhering that to the center and you can see the finished look of this card right here moving on to our second card i'm using the zig watercolor panel and i'm i've already gone ahead and embossed this faith sentiment onto a black embossing a black cardstock with white embossing uh, powder and I die cut it using this banner die and I've also added a jute ribbon not a ribbon like a thread do you call it a thread string uh, to the top of it uh, uh, just I tied a bow and I'm going to adhere this using some foam adhesive to this panel just deciding where I want it to the center or the top I decided the top of course and then here I'm adding a few uh, gemstones to this uh, image. I haven't used a lot of gemstones in all the cards today, so that's that's something new to me anyway. And then I'm going to add that to the top of a white note card, and here's the finished look of that card. The third card we're making using the Copic colored panel, and I'm going to start off by die cutting this circle uh, on this panel and uh, I've also die cut um, I think it's before before that sorry before I did uh, anything else actually I colored this circle the die cut circle using three different shades of peachy tones in this case it was R22 R21 no R22 R20 and R11 so I started off from the darker shade from the end blending it to the lightest towards the inside um, now when you're doing it make sure you're avoiding the flowers because these flowers are white and you don't want your pink to get onto the the white flowers so just just carefully around the edges of the flowers and then once this panel was blended I kept it aside and I also die cut uh, a sentiment smile uh, using three different uh, materials I used not three actually uh, two different foam it is a fun foam and uh, glitter gold glitter cardstock and I adhered the smile um, together with the fun fun foam so I kept the the smile in the fun form as is because it's easier for you to adhere an intricate die um, onto a fun form this way versus removing it from the uh, from the from the from the negative if it makes sense anyway so after I was done that I adhered that circle panel uh, directly onto my top folding note card using just some plain liquid adhesive and once I was done with that I added some foam tape behind the circle and I added that to the center or the negative of the is that the negative yeah that's negative negative of the of the panel of the circle and then I made sure that these flowers are all aligning the same way you don't want it to be skewed that look really weird and then I popped that uh, die cut smile from the fun fun form now when I put this gold smile over this panel it wasn't doing anything like it wasn't even seen it kind of looked very blended and blah so you, you see you right now you're seeing me adhere it and then the next step I'll do after this so after I was done adhering it I actually die cut the smile once again on a black cardstock there you go and then I glued this black smile offsetting it a bit onto the gold glitter cuts I mean gold glitter smile and that added a lot more it and here's the finished look of that card moving on to the next card this is the loose watercolor card that we I am in mean, panel that we created and I'm using this die cut called borders um, and I and and this it, it it has like you can actually use this like like adhere this this way onto a cardstock and add a sentiment in the center but instead I'm just going to use the top half of the of the die cut and I'm going to uh, before I can adhere that panel onto the note card I want to make sure that I position my uh, my sentiment and the place that I want it to be so this sentiment is called being you and I'm going to um, place it keeping 
in line with the angle of the of the die cut panel and then I'm going to just stamp that uh, where we had originally planned and then after that I'm just going to adhere this um, watercolor panel loose watercolor panel using some foam adhesive right above that sentiment okay there you go and once I was done with that I just added a few gemstones uh, just around the the sentiment just kind of uh, giving the sentiment a little bit of a focus um, and that pretty much completed this card and you'll soon see the finished look and here you go that's the finished look of that card moving on to our final card here um, this is the final home run and um, for this one we're using the the prisma colored paper pencil panel and I've already uh, stamped and embossed uh, happy birthday onto a black cardstock and I'm choosing uh, the word friend from this uh, stickers from this uh, alphabet sticker set this is called thickers and it's in gold color it has a gold foil on it and I'm placing that word directly on top of that strip that I created the happy birthday strip I created and that is so that I can get the friend lined perfectly like in a straight line and that's the reason why I'm why I'm doing this and you will as I'm moving forward you'll understand a little better what exactly I'm doing so I'm just making sure the placement is right and that it is centered to that uh, happy birthday that I stamped so once I was done with that I actually this the sticker has some adhesive but it's not strong and that works to my advantage which you'll see so I added some glue um, just to the word friend not on the black uh, strip but just to that uh, letters uh, for friend and then I'm going to place that friend where I want it in this case top center and now I'm going to pull that black strip off and that makes sure that my friend is lined perfectly in a straight line now I'm going to just adhere that strip of happy birthday using some foam adhesive right above the friend which would now read happy birthday friend and that completed that card I just adhered this panel onto my top folding note card and that card was done and here is the look the finished look here are all the five cards that we created uh, using different coloring mediums for the background i hope you enjoyed this video give me a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to my channel and i will see you next time Bye bye Ooh.